When it comes to distributed systems, handling failure is key. Kubernetes helps with this by utilizing controllers that can watch the state of your system and then restart services that stop performing. But on the other hand, Kubernetes can actually forcibly terminate your applications to ensure the overall health of the system. In this episode of Kubernetes Best Practices, let's take a look at how you can help Kubernetes do its job more efficiently and reduce the downtime your apps experience. In the pre-container world, most applications were running on VMs or physical machines. If an application crashed, it could take quite a while to boot up a replacement to take its place. Or even worse, someone would need to log into the machine and fix the issue by hand, even in the middle of the night. If you only had one or two machines to run the application, this time to recovery was unacceptable. So instead, it became common to use process-level monitoring to restart applications when they would crash. If the application crashed, the monitoring process could capture the exit code and then restart the server instantly. With the advent of systems like Kubernetes, this kind of system was just built into the infrastructure itself. Kubernetes uses an event loop to make sure that resources are healthy, from containers to the nodes themselves. This means you no longer need to manually run these monitoring processes. If a resource fails a health check, Kubernetes will just automatically spin up a replacement. But Kubernetes does a lot more than monitor your application for crashes. You know, it can create more copies of your application to run on multiple machines. It can update your application. You know, it can even run multiple versions of your application at the same time. So this means that there are many reasons why Kubernetes might terminate a perfectly healthy container. Like if you update your deployment with the rolling update, Kubernetes will slowly terminate old pods while spinning up new ones. If you drain a node, Kubernetes will terminate all pods in that node. And you know, if a node runs out of resources, Kubernetes will terminate pods to free those resources. So it's important that your application can handle termination gracefully, so that if there's a minimal impact on the end user and there's a minimal impact on the time to recovery. So this means that you know, it should save all the data that needs to be saved, close down any network connections, finish any work that's left, you know, other similar tasks. So in practice, this means your application needs to handle the SIG term message. When it receives this message, it should begin to shut down. Once Kubernetes decided to terminate your pod, a series of events takes place. Let's look at each one of these steps in the Kubernetes termination lifecycle. So let's say we want to terminate one of these pods. At this point, the pod will stop getting new traffic. Containers running in the pod will not be affected, but all new traffic will be prevented from coming in. So now let's look at the pre-stop hook. The pre-stop hook is a special command or HTTP request that is sent to the containers in the pod. If your application doesn't gracefully shut down when receiving a SIG term, you can use this hook to trigger a graceful shutdown. So most programs gracefully shut down when receiving a SIG term, but if you're using a third-party code or some system that you don't really have control over, the pre-stop hook is a great way to trigger a graceful shutdown without modifying the application. So now at this point, Kubernetes will send the SIG term signal to the containers in the pod. This signal lets the containers know they are going to be shut down soon. So your code should listen for this event and then start shutting down cleanly at this point. So this may include stopping any long-lived connections like a database connection or a WebSocket stream, saving the current state, and doing things like that. So even if you're using the pre-stop hook, it's important that you test what happens to your application when you send it the SIG term signal. So you're not surprised when it happens in production. At this point, Kubernetes will wait for a specified time called the termination grace period. By default, this is 30 seconds. It's important to note that this happens in parallel to the pre-stop hook and the SIG term signal. So Kubernetes will not wait for the pre-stop hook or the SIG term signal to finish. If your app finishes shutting down before the termination grace period is done, Kubernetes will just move to the next step immediately. Now, if your pod takes longer than 30 seconds to shut down, make sure you increase the grace period. You can do that by setting the termination grace period seconds option in the pod YAML. For example, this example has it set at 60 seconds. And now the last step. If the containers are still running after the grace period, they are sent the sig kill signal and then forcibly removed. At this point, Kubernetes 
cleans up all the objects as well. Kubernetes terminates pods for many reasons. And making sure that your application handles these terminations gracefully is core to creating a stable service. I'll see you on the next episode of Kubernetes Best Practices.